Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with, you know him, you love him, Seth Williams, retipster.com. Hey, everybody. Your source for all things just real estate related. Seth, how are you? Let's have a virtual cup of coffee together. You got it. I'm doing great. How are you doing, man? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. I can't complain. So before we started about uh, our coffee talk, Seth asked me a question. And, of course, I'm going to boomerang it back to him. Do you feel the boomerang? I do. do feel it? <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> so, Seth, what was your question? Well, my question for you, something I think we can both uh, share some light on, would be what is it that you do when you have a property that just isn't selling? Or say if you bought a property that, I don't know, maybe just wasn't the wisest investment in the first place. It was kind of a lemon and you just kind of ended up with it. And if you list that thing and, you know, it's just crickets, nobody's interested, what do you do? Like, how do you get around that obstacle and find a buyer? Right. Okay. So that, that is a great question. And let me just spin it back to you. So what are you currently doing? And I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, the typical, you know, run of the mill process is to, you know, put some time and effort into getting a really good listing, you know, get good photographs of it put it on postlets, put it on Craigslist, put it on all the major arteries out there. Um, and just making sure that I'm continually renewing that and sort of keeping it front and center in front of people. And a lot of times if a property is a good property, it's not going to take long because I don't, you know, just the price that I can price it at, it's just kind of easy to beat the competition and have a really good looking property that sells relatively quickly, but it doesn't always work that way. And, um, I think there's actually, it's a very multifaceted issue. There's a lot of different things you can do to kind of play with it and make a property look more appealing. Um, And it's not that you're, you know, it's not like you're tricking people into it. It's just that you weren't really doing the best representation in the first place. So, I mean, things like, I mean, if you don't have good pictures, you get good pictures. Right. Um, If that means you have to pay somebody to get get them, you know, go do that. Um, sometimes things like your headline, you know, maybe sometimes you just need to promote it in more places or more frequently. Um, things like adding seller financing to the mix can be a huge thing that will open doors for a lot of buyers who otherwise wouldn't really even have the option of buying your property. Um, I mean, those are just a few things off the top of my head, but what kind of stuff do you do? Okay. So number one, if it doesn't sell within 30 days, I freak out. Yeah. I freak out. My team freaks out. What happened? (laughs) Right? So number one, you know, we're always listing on Craigslist and Backpage, Land and Farm, uh, Land Watch, right? You might do a Facebook page. I love Arizona land, right? Sure. You might hit groups, whatever it is. 30 days crickets, that's crazy. So what we determine is like we're not giving what the market wants. Mm -hmm. So we make it, and this is a secret, Seth. And you can use it. We okay. make it absolutely irresistible. Sure. So first thing I do is I get on the phone and talk to old buyers and start getting them excited about the property. And I might do, and here's an example, I might do a promotion to my VIP buyers list. And sure. if the property was priced uh, at cash, I might do easy, easy terms, like ridiculously easy terms mm-hmm. to get that property sold. And that then it, it it sells usually at that point. If we have high terms, right, and it's not selling, then we might flip it to cash. Sure. But we always figure out really quickly what the market wants to make it sell. So we might give it thirty days to test the market, um, and then we do that. So here's another example. I I bought a subdivision in Texas, mm-hmm. and the POA went under. There's no POA. They had hundreds of lots. I bought them all. Sure. I mean for nothing. Right. Wow, that's awesome. There's utilities, yeah. there's a lake, it's near a city, it's nice stuff. These mm-hmm. lots were selling for like twenty grand back in the day. Wow. So me being a nice capitalist, I figured out selling for ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Crickets. Yeah. I lowered <laughs> I lowered it to to uh you know, easy terms at five thousand. Right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm into it for hundreds. Right? Crickets. Mm-hmm. Totally freak out. Yeah. I flip them all for super cheap 
for cash. All of a sudden, flying off the shelves. Boom, boom, boom. Look, it wasn't the home run deal I thought it was going to be, but the 300 to 500% ROI, I'll take it. Yeah. So does that does that help answer your question on what I do? Yeah, man. So So you find that in some cases... I mean, seller financing may be what people want. In other cases, cash at a lower price could be. I mean, it's not necessarily a, you know, do this every time and it will always fix the problem. It's more of, you know, maybe exploring a little bit and testing the waters and figuring out what is the real solution, right? Yeah, I mean, that, and that's why marketing is like this multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. It's. I wish it were the, you know, it were math. But it's just yeah. not. You've got to test headlines. You've got to test ads. And, you know, it's funny because we were just talking at boot camp about Coke, right? Everybody knows Coke. Mm-hmm. There's not a person on the planet that has never heard of Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yet, why do they spend a billion dollars a year on advertising? Mm-hmm. Why not just have a board of directors meeting? You know what? This year we won't market. And we'll take that <laughs> billion dollars and, you know, we'll buy the, you know, lower Antilles. I mean... What happens? They stop marketing. Their, yeah. yeah, their revenue goes down. And we forget about Coke. They want to stay top of mind. But they're always testing ads. They'll run 16 ads at one time and see which one converts better. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So yeah. we have to do this. We don't need to spend you know, even a fraction of that in our land investing businesses. But we do need to be out there and testing. And you know, ABM, always be marketing. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually just talking to somebody about that uh, earlier today. It's the marketing just never stops. Like it is a constant wheel that's always going. Uh, right. Regardless of how busy you are or how great things are going, I mean, there's never a point where you just don't need it anymore. So, yeah, I agree. Right. So, M&Ms, in our business, what moves the needle? Mailing and marketing. Seth Williams, retipster.com. <laughs> Thanks for having a virtual cup of coffee with me. Absolutely. And Seth, where can we learn more about you? Yeah, the best place would just be over at my blog, which is retipster.com. And that's uh, there's a contact page if you want to get a hold of me. Um, or also really any of the, you know, any of the major social media outlets um, and pretty much all of them for the most part. So yeah. Yeah, because you're always marketing. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Yeah. It's always going. <laughs> so yeah, so the the key is, you know, create a system, create a process and then get get yourself out of it as much as you can so you can just work on the strategy. Seth Absolutely. Williams, I really appreciate you taking time out of your crazy busy schedule <laughs> to uh, to help enlighten the uh, best passive income model listeners and the land geek community on how the man, the myth, the RE Tipster legend gets properties <laughs> sold very quickly. Thanks, Seth. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Talk to you later. See ya.